Hello, my name is Wala Nuesri. I am a sales engineer with WatchGuard Canada, and I would like to welcome you to the Team Canada Sick Thursdays. Our focus today is going to be WatchGuard Cloud. In today's agenda, we're going to be talking about what is WatchGuard Cloud. We're going to be talking about WatchGuard Cloud account types. What are the account types related to the operator roles and role mapping? The type of services, licenses that can be managed currently by WatchGuard Cloud, Firebox management action in WatchGuard Cloud, as well as the Firebox visibility, which is the logging and reporting portion in WatchGuard Cloud. And we're going to end this session by talking about what's new uh, with WatchGuard. And definitely, we're going to do a live demo to go over the components of WatchGuard Cloud. Uh, as the subscribers, the operators, and the different actions that's available for you. So let's get started here with the definition. What is WatchGuard Cloud? It is mainly a cloud-based platform that was developed to help you as a partner to manage, configure, and report on the security services for each of the customers from one platform with one intuitive interface. It's a unified platform that is going to help you to more efficiently run the business and better serve your customers, as well as to reduce the infrastructure costs because this is available for you in the cloud, and to accelerate the customer acquisition with streamline onboarding. So whenever that you have a subscriber or client, it's going to be easier to create that in the cloud, and definitely I'm going to go over that in the demo. Now, one of the important things about the structure of WatchGuard Cloud is the multi-tenancy and multi-tier. Other vendors, they actually provide multi-tenancy, but one of the unique things about WatchGuard Cloud is the ability of multi-tier. So for you as a service provider, you can create other service providers, and then under these service providers, they can have their own tenants or clients. So what are the key features about this architecture of WatchGuard Cloud? It's the ability to create unlimited tenants, ability to scale to unlimited tiers, the service provider or subscriber accounts, depending on what you're trying to do here, logically separated tenants, and that's the main idea behind WatchGuard Cloud subscriber and service provider so that you will have a logical container that enable you as a service provider to assign operators, to assign or um, uh, assign your licenses to these logical containers. Built-in tenants types, which is we're gonna be talking about in a minute, parent-child tenant relationship, so there is the inheritance in some of these features, which is we also going to show later on in the demo. Built-in security compliance. To make it clear, we have to talk about the WatchGuard Cloud Platform. So as we talked about it in uh, a couple of slides ago, WatchGuard Cloud is a multi-tenant, multi-tier public cloud that is available from WatchGuard Cloud. And the main idea that you have one platform that you will have your subscribers or the end users with the ability to do the management, the protection, and the visibility of their security services in one location. Some of the services that it's already available for you with WatchGuard Cloud is the auth point multi-factor authentication and also the visibility portion, which is like a dimension, but it's in the cloud. Other milestones that it's been already achieved in WatchGuard Cloud is the system actions, which is we're going to talk about in more details in a minute, and also the branding, where you have custom brandings depending on the subscriber view. Now, I just wanted to mention that there's other services here, such as secure Wi-Fi and other network security features, that it's already in the cloud, but they are not part of WatchGuard Cloud yet. And 
the main vision is to include everything under the WatchGuard cloud so that you will have one interface and one look and feel, one way to do the same process for different features, uh, for different products that it's available from WatchGuard. Now we're gonna come to the WatchGuard account types. What are the account types that's available for us? Mainly they're gonna be two of them, subscriber account, and we're gonna talk about service provider in a minute. But when it comes to subscriber account, if you use security services such as Authpoint, so that you are end user, you're not the managed service provider, you went directly to one of our partners and bought this um, license for Authpoint, uh, then you are a subscriber and you're gonna have the subscriber account. What you can do in this scenario that you can configure and manage their own security services in the cloud and see the related metrics and reports. It's also that if you are a service provider and created your subscriber, you're gonna have the same capabilities uh, just described. When it comes to the service provider account, or we call it the tier one service provider, then you are a partner and you're a service provider that you can manage other subscribers under you or manage uh, service providers that they have subscribers. So you can manage the inventory and allocate devices. Uh, you can manage your licenses and also the subscriber licenses and off point users to customer accounts. You can manage security services for your own account and for all customer accounts that under uh, your management. Next, we're gonna be talking about the operator roles and depending on if you are a subscriber or a service provider, definitely they're gonna be different. So we have four different roles that's available for subscriber. First of all is the administrator that have full permission uh, for the subscriber account, and they uh, they they are the only one they can actually add, edit, or delete other operators on that specific subscriber account. We have the analysts that have full permission to configure services and read only permission everywhere else. We have the observer, or what we call it as read only, right? So that have read only permission throughout their account. Then we have the one that is no access that have no access in this scenario to log to WatchGuard Cloud until they are assigned a different role. Next, we're gonna be talking about WatchGuard operator roles. First of all, depending if you're a sub subscriber or service provider. If you're a subscriber, then you have these different operator roles to choose from. First of all is the administrator, that you have full permission within that account, and you are the only one that you can add operators, delete them, or edit them. Analyst, that have full permission to configure the service, but read only permission everywhere else. Observer is the read-only account, so they can um, cannot do any changes, that they just can see what's going on. No access is the operator who have no access role, cannot log into the WatchGuard cloud until they are assigned a different role. So sometimes we use this one if we have a specific uh, operator that um, maybe uh, on PTO or vacation, or we are not sure if we wanna provide them the access or not, so then we can have no access until uh, we are sure and we can uh, add, add him as an ad, uh, administrator, analyst, or observer to that specific account. When it comes to the service provider operator roles, we have the owner, uh, and mainly that you have full permission with the service provider account and many services, and they are the only uh, operator who can add, edit, and delete other operators for the account. Sales, the sales operator have full permission for inventory and account management, but read only for configuration service because they don't need that. It's mainly that they want the licenses allocated to specific users. Help desk 
operators have full permission to configure the services, but no permission for the other things like assigning the license. Auditor have read-only permission throughout their service provider account and definitely the no access in case if we needed to use that. One of the things that I wanted to mention about this role mapping, because there we have different operator roles are available for the service provider and the subscriber. So when a service provider look at the subscriber view, their permission is gonna be mapped in the following way. So if you are an owner, then you're gonna be an administrator of the subscriber view. Sales is gonna be observer. Help disk is gonna be an analyst and an auditor is going to be the observer and please note this information is available the documentation um, that is online now we're gonna talk about adding a firebox to the watchguard cloud so you can add this firebox to watchguard cloud um, to enable the monitoring reporting and some of the system actions that's available for you you have the ability to automatically generate over 100 dashboards and reports as needed. Some of the requirements that is uh, to add the Firebox to, uh, to the cloud, uh, definitely it applies to all models. So they have MT, Firebox V, and Firebox Cloud. XTM doesn't work. Uh, Firebox licenses, so it can be a total security suite or basic security suite if you just have support only with no other subscriptions, you're not gonna have, be able to use WatchGuard Cloud. Fireware um, operating system uh, version 12 is the minimum 12.4 or higher for Fire Cluster, and we will see that we have 12.5 uh, for that it is recommended for other services as well. Here we go. So we have Firebox system actions. We have 12.5.2 release. That has been, um, you know, we have the ability to do some system actions that's available for you. The 12.5.4 is the latest that it is recommended currently. Firebox fire, firmware upgrades. That's something that we can do as a system action. It can be an immediate upgrade or a scheduled one for an individual or group of firewalls. We have the reboot um, actions and also save and restore Firebox backup images, which is gonna be very useful for you as a service provider. Another thing just I wanted to mention here, which is useful for you as a service provider, or even if you're a client, but you wanted to uh, do some custom branding. So you can customize these items as needed. First of all, are the logos and images that can appear in the report that is generated by WatchGuard Cloud. Um, the logos and images that appear in the identity provider portal if you're using AuthPoint as a multi-factor authentication. Also the uh, reply to email to address the notifications that is available by WatchGuard Cloud or AuthPoint, as well as the logo and thumbnail on the set password and token activation by AuthPoint and the contact information that appears in WatchGuard Cloud email and PDF report footers. Some of the important points just to keep in mind, or some of them, they are actually just a summary of what we talked about already, that WatchGuard Cloud is included with BSS and TSS. And the main reason why I am actually pointing this again, it's because other vendors, they charge extra for such features. Total security includes WatchGuard Cloud with the uh, with the uh, 30 days of data retention. So TSS, you have 30 days. With BSS or basic security, you're gonna have one day of data retention that is available for you. To extend the length of that um, retention period, you can actually purchase an extension and you can apply that license depending on the subscriber. So if somebody came and said, okay, for me, I need you know six months worth of information that it's always available for me, then you can do the extension. Usually 30 days, it's more than enough uh, to do your forensics. You can do um, the reporting. You can schedule the report by the end of the month 
that can be sent to you or sent to the client as needed. Another thing that I wanted to mention here that you can access WatchGuard Cloud via two different ways as needed. So you can go through the portal, which is WatchGuard portal account, or directly via uh, cloud.watchguard.com. I also want to point out that all the communications to and from WatchGuard Cloud, they are encrypted and they're using TLS via AWS IoT. So definitely we have the security as a most important aspect of this communication. Next, we're going to be talking about what's new. And mainly, uh, we are excited about the new hardware that's available in the Firebox T-Series. And just I want to let you know here that we designed, and our team in Seattle that designed these Fireboxes uh, and upgrade them with the feedback from the service providers and the US partner in mind. So first of all, I just wanted to mention the Firebox T15 and T15W. Um, this is our entry level. This is not a new one that's been around for some time. It is uh, gonna support up to five users. We have the Rapid Deploy, WatchGuard Cloud, SD1 and Wi-Fi that it is available. So we have T15W uh, that is gonna support Wi-Fi built in into the firewall itself. In general, it's going to be 160 megabit per second UTM full scan, 400 megabit per second for firewall iMix, and we are including the number for iMix now so that you will have uh, more realistic uh, numbers when it comes to the throughput. So this one is going to include TCP, UDP, different type of um, packet sizes uh, whenever that the testing is being done. We have 90 megabit per second for VPN, 11 megabit per second for HTTPS with IPS. So one of the things that a lot of processes now it's using is HTTPS and we want to do the decryption or we want to do HTTPS with IPS. Uh, we wanted to provide more resources to that. This is why we have here the T20 and T20W available in two flavors, um, one with a Wi-Fi support. Again, it's also supporting five users, Rapid Deploy, WatchGuard Cloud, SD-WAN, and the Wi-Fi. Uh, the UTM is 150 megabit per second. We have 510 megabit per second for firewall IMAX and 50 megabit per second for HTTPS with IPS. The T40 and T40W, uh, it's up to 20 users. Um, what's new here that it is supporting intelligent antivirus and access portal, which is two features previously, they were only supported with minimum with M270. So the M, uh, the M series only, but now we have it with the tabletop. Uh, we have one PoE plus uh, port that is available for you, 300 megabit per second for UTM full scan, and 92 megabit per second for HTTPS with IPS. Then we're going to be talking here about Firebox T80. It supports up to 50 users, also supports intelligent virus and access portal, which is clientless VPN. It has two PoE plus ports. Um, and also an optional expansion module with one SFP plus that is available for you. And uh, we had that in the design because nowadays maybe if you wanna connect this, it's maybe medium size client and they want to connect it to a one gig fiber connection that it is coming from the ISP or it is connected to the core switch, then this is something that's gonna be available. Also, uh, coming soon, we're going to have a support for LTE module um, that it definitely it will provide uh, an extra service that's going to be available for you on this Firebox T80. When it comes to the UTM, 630 megabit per second, um, and you have 356 megabit per second for HTTPS with IPS. 
one of the things that I wanted also to mention in here um, is moving the configuration to new Firebox. It's the same uh, whenever that you move from your XTM devices to the M or T series before, it's the same procedure that you're gonna do here. Uh, whenever that you're moving from, let's say, uh, T15 to T T20 or uh, from T35 to uh, T40. First of all, you need to connect to the device. Uh, you have to have the access to the old one and the new one. Uh, my favorite tool is WSM. You're gonna open a connection. You're gonna um, definitely remove the feature key from the old Firebox configuration file. So you have that configuration file already open WSM. You remove the old feature key, you add the new one. Uh, if the new feature key is for a different model with different number of interfaces, then you need to review the, uh, and update the network interface configuration, especially if there is a mismatch in these interfaces. If you're going from a higher number of interfaces to a lower number of interfaces. If the new Firebox runs a different version of the Firewall OS, then you're gonna uh, use the uh, compatibility settings uh, in WSM. And then you're gonna save the configuration to the new Firebox and move the cabling as needed. Very important point, whenever that you move the configuration file to the new Firebox, the file does not include the manually configured users and roles for Firebox administration. You must manually add them to the new Firebox as needed. All right, so now we reached the time for a demo of WatchGuard Cloud, where I'm gonna talk about the different components that we mentioned in this session. Um, and we're gonna talk about the subscriber views, uh, the service provider, and um, the system actions uh, that we talked about earlier. All right, let's take a look at where we can access WatchGuard Cloud. First of all, we need to go to watchguard.com. Then we're gonna click on login, and we're gonna log in as a partner. One of the things that I recommend in here uh, definitely is to enable the auth point as multi-factor authentication on the logging in into the watch guard account itself. So now once that I log in here, it's gonna send this verification to my um, phone as a second factor. I'm gonna approve. And now I am logged in into my account. Once I'm there, I have to go to the support center. My watch guard, and you will notice that we have watch guard cloud under my watch guard. So this is the main dashboard of watch guard cloud that it will give you the view of the license expiration, the subscribers, the service providers, the auth point users allocation that's been done and other information that's related to your account. I'm gonna go over the different options that's available for us on the left in here. So first of all, we have the subscribers, which is gonna be your clients, where you can see what are the subscribers that is gonna be created already, such as um, we have here, the uh, accounts that related uh, to WatchGuard uh, sales. That's the one that is uh, created by default for you as a service provider or as a partner at the beginning. The rest of them, they're gonna be added uh, manually as needed. Each one of them, it will show you the number of fireboxes being assigned, the number of off point users that's been used, um, the operators for each one of them. And in here, you can come and uh, click on it and you can manage the account and also you can uh, pivot to the subscriber view of that specific account. We're gonna come back later here to um, uh, add subscribers. Service providers, this is where you can add your service provider and see how many service provider that you created. Um, if I want to add another service provider, I can come here, I can uh, add the account name. 
you notice that the data zone for this uh, specific account is in North America because the partner uh, account that uh, created mainly was allocated to North America. We have the contact, the company address information, and after that, if I want to add operators. Then we have here the inventory. One of the things about the inventory that we need to understand is the structure. So as you can see here, I am at the top global level is the parent. And the rest of them is under that specific global level. So in here, I can see the number of off point that is available. Um, there is five months for the expiration of the licenses that's available. We have 25 unallocated users, 25 allocated users. It means that we have a total of 50 licenses and we are using only 25 currently on this top level. Also, it will show the Firebox um, that it's assigned to our account as a service provider in here. And as you can see, we have a total of 34 of them. Only 13 is being allocated and they are uh, using the monitoring and the other system actions in the cloud. Now, if I wanna see here the information that is related to off point, then I can go to uh, allocation and see the information. So in here, I can see the names of the subscribers, how many off-point uh, user licenses being assigned to each one of them, and the expiration date for each one of them. And also, I can change the view here to service provider. And as I can see, that for service provider, at this moment, I didn't assign any off-point user licenses to them. Right? Uh, this is the licenses that are related to OffPoint that is being um, added to WatchGuard Sales Canada account as a service provider. Um, if I want to add more licenses, you notice that it has to be done uh, through the portal itself. So you can go to Support Center uh, and uh, you can add or activate the license that you want in there and then you can allocate it um, as needed to different subscribers. And I will show you that uh, through the trial as well. Now for the Firebox, you can see here we have the allocation. You can see uh, each of the account names of the subscribe, subscribers and how many Fireboxes that uh, reporting in the cloud. You can take a look at the unallocated. It means that these firewalls is being um, activated under the WatchGuard Sales Canada account, but not being allocated to any uh, subscriber uh, account, including the subscriber view of the WatchGuard Sales Canada account. And also have the ability here to add the data retention licenses as needed. This is definitely, it's a, an extra uh, cost depending on the period that is required for the retention. Moving on in here, we're gonna go to administration and this is the administration of the account for you as a service provider or a partner. You can uh, see here the name of that account, the total number of operator, how many operator that's online currently. If you click on view my account, it will take you to the details that related to it. One of the important uh, information here is the account number. That's your account number in the cloud or WatchGuard cloud. Another place that you can see it here at the top. Uh, again, also the data zone, it is uh, in North America. So if you are a partner that it is in uh, Europe, then you're gonna see that the data zone, it's gonna be in Europe the contact information, and also the operators that um, are assigned to this specific uh, account, which is a service provider account. And if you wanna add more operators, you cannot do it from here. You have to actually go and do it through your partner portal. You can send an invite, they accept the invite, and then the operators show up in here. And definitely in there, whenever that you add the operators, uh, from the uh, partner portal, 
uh, WatchGuard account, you can select what's the role of that operator from there and if he has the ability to do everything else or just only uh, WatchGuard cloud access. Other things that's available in here is the managed access. You have the ability to uh, uh, use RESTful API. Uh, the information is available for you in here. Um, and also request access. This is gonna be very useful for you and I'll give you a scenario for this. So let's say that uh, you have a client that already he used Oppoint or used the firewall in the cloud. He has his own subscriber account, but now he is seeking your services as a managed service provider. And you want to add them under your WatchGuard cloud account so that you can manage them. So you have to click here, request an account access, and that uh, account access, um, it can uh, be within a specific period of time or until revoked. Let's say that I put it until revoked. And the next step here, it will give you the information that you have to send to the client. So they, the client, uh, whenever that they receive this in an email, they have to copy this verification code and um, paste it in their WatchGuard Cloud um, Managed Access page, and they click on Submit, and they will grant you the access. One of the important notes that this verification code is going to expire in 14 days. Um, it will not allow you to move on until that you copy this to clipboard so that you can actually send it by email. If I click on close here and I go here to delegation, there is nothing delegated yet to me, but if I want to see the pending, I can see the pending uh, uh, request that I already sent you know, by email to the end user. Since we are not going to be using this now, I'm just going to go ahead and delete it. Other things that's available on this level is the beta feature so that you can enable, disable the beta feature for you as a service provider. Please note that there is similar configuration for the administration per subscriber that you can turn on and off as needed. Uh, one of the things that we talked about is the branding, where uh, a way that you're going to reflect your image or reflect the subscriber image into the reports and the emails that is being used. You'll notice here that you can uh, drag and drop the images for the company logo, the background image, and the thumbnail images. Uh, please note that there is a specification that has to be followed uh, when it comes to the size and the uh, type of the logo or the image that is going to be used. Also, the information related to the reply to email address, the footer, and once that you're done, you're going to update that. Great. So now we're going to take this um, opportunity to go over an example. In this example, I'm going to go here. I'm going to add a new subscriber. And in that new subscriber, we will have a trial for Offpoint. And also, we can add the firewall, a Firebox B, for us to monitor through that specific subscriber. Okay. This uh, subscriber, I'm just going to call them new age. I have the contact information in here. I'm going to add my own contact information. All right. Uh, I have the option to add the company address if I want to. For now, I'm going to leave it as is. I'm not going to add any operators yet. I will save the account. Okay, done. We have a uh, new age as a subscriber has been added. There is nothing being added to that specific subscriber yet. So the first step that I'm going to do here is to add a trial uh, for Authpoint for this specific user. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to go back to the WatchGuard uh, uh, portal and I'm going to go under Manage Products. This is where I can find the trial for Authpoint. So I'm going to click here on WatchGuard Authpoint trial. 
and I'm gonna choose the option for free 60 day trial. And there, I'm gonna choose that it's a new license. Please note that if this is uh, somebody already um, created an account, a subscriber has been created and you wanna add a new trial for uh, off point, then you can choose it from here. But for me now, I'm gonna have it as a new license. I'm gonna give it the name, new age. Click next. And I'm gonna accept the end user license agreement. At that moment, um, it's gonna add this trial to the backend server and it will give you the option to uh, activate another license or go to the WatchGuard cloud itself. I'm gonna go back here to the WatchGuard cloud and I want to add that trial. To do that, I'm gonna go under the inventory here and it's because when I added it, I added it on that highest level. So I can go here to my licenses and you will notice that I have the new age trial 250 license. Until this moment, I didn't assign it yet to the uh, new age subscriber account. To do that, I'm gonna click there. I'm gonna choose new age and you'll see here that I have 250 users and one month, uh, uh, 60 days to uh, use this trial. Great, if I go back here now to allocation and I'm gonna go to new age, you notice that new age has now 250 licenses. Now let's take a look here at the subscriber uh, view. What can I do in there? So if I click on new age, this is the dashboard that we have. We have the alerts, the authentication, any resource activities, number of users, the auth point license details that's available for us. Currently, there is no devices here that is reporting for uh, visibility. If I want to do some uh, configuration, I have the option to do the configuration for Firebox or for auth point. Let's say that we just added this license for OffPoint and we don't want to do the configuration for it. Then we can come here. We have the option to add the, uh, the groups, the users, the resources that's available. We can download the gateway and do the configuration related to OffPoint. If I want to do the monitoring, we have also the option for Firebox and OffPoint. Another thing here that's related to this subscriber now is the administration. So if you click here on my account, you will see the information that's related to that specific account. And I can see here the subscriber account number. So one of the things that you will notice for the main account, it is ACC and then the number. For this uh, subscriber under the main account, it's gonna be WGC1 and then this, the, the number for that subscriber. I can edit the account, change the name. I can convert the account from a subscriber to service provider. I can delete the account if I don't uh, you know, want it anymore or I don't manage the service uh, for that subscriber. You can click here and you can see the license details. Currently we have for the point trial. We can see the managed access. This is where that we can copy for granting the access, uh, the verification code to the service provider. Uh, we have also the beta feature, the branding, the API usage. We also have access here to the notification. That's a very important one that is related to the alert. You have rules in here for um, specific topics where you can actually set the email address for the notification. So for example, for inventory that it is expiring soon, I can come here and I'll say, uh, you know, there's a description for it and I can check here that it's an email. Uh, we're gonna send all the alerts or it can send at most, or uh, also we can um, set what is the subject for it. This is the uh, subject by default. 
add the recipient. So I can here add the email address of the recipient. It can be for you as an administrator or it can be the client administrator. Also, we have the option here for uh, viewing the announcements. This is a useful place to see what's new with WatchGuard Cloud. Great. Now, the next step that we're going to do is to add a Firebox here for uh, visibility. To do that, we have to, first of all, go back to the service provider view. And in there, under inventory, we have to allocate that firewall uh, into the subscriber. So I have to go here under unallocated, and I want to look for the one that belongs to me. So I have one here that uh, I want to use, which is a Firebox V small. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to select the account, new age, and you have the ability here for the allocation expiration. Let's say that I am managing this for a couple of months until February. I'm going to save that. Now it's being allocated to that uh, subscriber, new age. So if I go to new age here, there's one firebox is being allocated. There's a couple of extra steps that need to be done. I'm gonna go to the subscriber view, click on new age. And now we're gonna actually configure Firebox. We're gonna add a new device. As you can see, that's the device that's been allocated to me. There's an option also to add a cluster in case that's the uh, what you have in your environment. I'm gonna click on the plus. Yes, I want to add this device to the cloud. It will generate here a verification code that I have to use. The next step, you have to actually connect to the firewall itself. I'm going to copy this code first. I'm going to go here. I have the Firebox V. I'm going to uh, connect to it using WSM. It has 12.5.4 uh, in it. It has connectivity to the internet. I never used it before with WatchGuard Cloud. And I'm going to open the policy manager first so that we can enable the WatchGuard Cloud in there and uh, paste this uh, verification code. All right. What I have to do in here, I'm going to have come to setup, WatchGuard Cloud, and I'm going to enable WatchGuard Cloud. That's the only thing that I need to do in here. Right. I'm going to save this configuration to the Firebox. Save. Yes. You will notice that's the moment that it will ask for the verification code for for, uh, for for the cloud. So I'm going to paste that, click OK, done. One of the places that I can check in here, if I go to the FSM, um, I can see if it is enabled or disabled in that scenario. If I go back here, I'm going to click on done. And you notice now Firebox V is reporting to the cloud. And it pulled the information with the version, the serial number, the IP address, all the details that's related to the licensing. Now we are still under configure. I can enable, disable the logging from the device. I can remove it from here. I can also do the system actions that we talked about. So we have backup. I can add a backup and when i click on add backup it is actually sending that command from the cloud to the firewall to save a backup on the firewall so if i click here i want to add another backup and it will tell you that the backup was successful i can come here and i can restore or remove that backup as needed now, if I go back here to monitor Fireboxes, you will notice 
that we have the information that's related to the visibility in the cloud. Can take a look here at the dashboard. Usually it's gonna take some time to for this information to be normalized and populated. Uh, just to show you the example in here, if I go back and I will show you other firewalls um, under monitor, fireboxes, these are the fireboxes and it can show you here which one is online, which one is um, offline. Uh, so for example, if I take here the T20W, uh, we'll see the information that it's related to the CPU usage. I can change it to the last seven days if I want to see that. So I can see the botnet detection is working, the web blocker, intrusion protection, all this configuration that is done on the firewall to report. I can go to the dashboard and click here and see the executive dashboard on the information of the top clients, the top domains, the security dashboard, and whatever that it is you are used to on the mention, uh, it is available in here. And I can do also the per client report as needed. The last thing that I want to talk about here is related to the actions. So if I go here, configure fireboxes, as we talked already about the backup, there is the ability to do the uh, reboot for the devices. If I go on the highest level, I have the option here to do the firmware upgrades. And here it will show you which one of the firewalls that it can be upgraded, ready to upgrade or already up to date as needed. So if I want to upgrade one of them, can come here and click on upgrade the firmware and it will take me through this wizard. It's like, okay, this is the version that's available and uh, select the device, uh, schedule the upgrade now or later and click finish. That's all for our demo. I hope that this was useful and informative uh, session for you. Okay, I guess uh, we have a few minutes here. Uh, that we can take a couple of questions. If you have any other questions, please type them into the question dashboard so we can uh, answer them. Um, if you didn't have the chance, definitely we can answer them uh, later on as well. So the first question that we have in here uh, is related to the MSSP command. Um, and uh, if there is a possibility that we can actually um, have uh, the management of MSSP uh, devices uh, with the uh, WatchGuard Cloud. So yes, definitely we can uh, do that. Uh, but uh, in this scenario that you have uh, one step extra here so that you have to do the initial uh, management of the licensing using MSSP command and after that you can um, work on uh, the rest of the configuration or the rest of the management using the WatchGuard uh, cloud itself. Um, another question here, um, can we integrate log alerting to ConnectWise? Uh, we do have that with the firewalls. Uh, we are, you know, having uh, the API uh, being open. Um, there are some of information, it's a high level information that's available right now that you can use API for, but um, uh, definitely it's something that uh, we can uh, dig deeper into this and I can uh, double check for you uh, if we can uh, send more information to ConnectWise. Right, another question coming here. Um, do T55 W Firebox have a watch cloud? Uh, yes, so it doesn't matter. So if you have any of the M series, T series, Firebox B or Firebox Cloud, then 
you can um, use the WatchGuard cloud as long as you have uh, basic security or total security. If the firewall is just coming with the standard support, then uh, you cannot use WatchGuard cloud. Okay. We have one more question here. Um, can you mention again what the minimum requirement for subscriptions uh, for a firebox must have to be managed by the cloud? Uh, again, it's basic security and total security, right? So these two, then you can um, use WatchGuard Cloud. But remember that the retention period, it's going to be uh, different in this scenario. Uh, for basic security, is going to be only one day. And uh, for um, uh, your total security is going to be 30 days. If you need more retention period, then we can uh, you can add you know uh, by purchasing more license for that. All right. Um, I think there is no more questions in here for now. Uh, again, if you have uh, any other questions, definitely you can send it our way and we can uh, take a look at that. Um, there is just um, um, uh, a slide here that I wanted to share with you that it's related to uh, the feedback. So please, uh, you can uh, go to this link or you can scan the QR code and uh, just take a few minutes to uh, say how we did this time. And also, if you have any other topics that you want us to focus on uh, next time. So um, I think uh, that's all the time that uh, we have uh, for today. Um, please also join us on the uh, next uh, webinar. Uh, the next webinar is going to be on July 23rd, and we will uh, we're going to be talking about uh, Panda Endpoint Security. It's one of the uh, new product that we have that is going to be giving you a lot of features with endpoint security. Okay. So, uh, Wendy, uh, it's back to you. Okay, thank you everyone for joining us today. We'll see you next month. Take care.